So uh, let's uh, discuss this very important topic today, which is about creating a new user facing core team slash creating a new design for Drupal core. So just a disclaimer, this presentation is non-technical. We won't discuss any of the <laughs> technical details about the implementation. Uh, I won't be offended <laughs> if you leave at this point. Uh, you can discuss your technical details with the other people outside of the room, but not here, not today. Uh, I will have another presentation tomorrow where there will be plenty of technical details included in the session. So let's start with the, with the why, because that is the common question. Why would someone want to have a new design in Drupal core? So the, the most, the first reason that I would have is that we need to improve our first time user experience. We want to give the users that, he, that we have somehow got to try Drupal to actually stay using Drupal. So we should give them good user experience. The first five minutes that we give for the users uh, should matter. Maybe they won't use Drupal again. And it's not all, always just about the one person who is trying, trying out Drupal. It's also about the people that they are gonna tell about Drupal. <laughs> So it might affect multiple people than just the one person trying out Drupal. Um, also, we should have design and brand that, that supports our technical capabilities. So whenever someone looks at Drupal, it should look like what you can build with Drupal so that they kind of get an idea. Uh, what, is it, what is it all about? Because as we are gonna see soon, it probably doesn't really represent how we how we would see Drupal as a software. So I just wanted to make a short demo about how does different open source CMS default theme designs look like. I'm not trying to hurt anyone. I'm not trying to tell that anyone has done a bad job with their C uh, uh, by designing. I'm just trying to point out that maybe there is uh, need to think about something like this. So let's start with the uh, very popular fellow competitor, uh, WordPress. Uh, this is the design that they have currently. This is how WordPress looks right after installing it. So you can see that they have a little bit of content, but the design itself is very, very plain and very, I would say it's not complicated at all, very simple, but it still represents something relatively modern, something like that this would be very easy to build uh, in Drupal. I think one front-end developer could build something like this in a week of a time, uh, full time. So good design doesn't always have to be complicated. It can be simple, uh, as long as it mo rep represents modern values. In, uh, also, WordPress works pretty well on the mobile. Uh, you can see that some of the things are put away uh, at this point, but especially on the mobile, this is very, very simple. Uh, this is Concrete 5. Uh, they have a little bit more design elements on their site, so they would have like a slider, and they have some, some blocks where they are demonstrating what you could do with that system. Uh, also, this is pretty simple design. There's nothing complicated or fancy, again, but they've brought a little bit more complicated elements on the site compared to the WordPress, which which doesn't have anything, uh, anything at all. Uh, also, you can see on the uh, top the menu. So they are demonstrating different kind of features by default that you could build using that system, which can be also pretty handy. And this is also uh, because sometimes we we think that uh, if we want to build, uh, so what we want Drupal to be. Out of, out of box, has to represent something that is realistic. It doesn't have to be anything realistic. This is absolutely it's just a showcase. This is not a real website, but it's a showcase of different features that you could build using this system. So we don't have to build anything realistic. It can be purely on demonstration purposes like this is. Also, this, this system works fairly well on the, on the, uh, on the mobile devices. 
So everything has been designed pretty well for the, uh, for the mobile. Next one is Joomla. And as we can see, the designs are getting a little bit more, more rough. But uh, you can see that they are also having a little bit of pictures over there. They have also default content. And actually, Joomla even allows you to configure while installing what kind of default content do you want to show on the site. I don't know why, but they, they allow you to choose a theme that you want to use for demonstrating the site. Um, you can see a little bit of different kind of elements, components on the site. So uh, that's what they provide for their users. That's, that also works pretty well on the mobile device, what I was surprised in the most part, because it didn't, it didn't look like mobile first uh, design, at least for me, for some reason. Uh, anyway, it, it was working pretty well. And this is what you get when you install Drupal. <laughs> so when we look at this, I, I don't think the design says much. We have blue, we have white, and we have black. And we tell our users welcome to whatever site they've built, and that's all. So this doesn't demonstrate at all what Drupal could build. This doesn't represent any of the technical uh, features that we have or advantages that we have. This is all that we show to them. And the thing that I most like is that by default, there is like a RSS uh, link on the front page. That's absolutely the most important feature to have on the front page. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a sign of a modern system. Yeah, and on mobile, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the same. And yeah, you can see what, how, how this design was created. Like first there was something and then it was put into another form. And yeah, it's very, very messy on the mobile currently the most part. So because of this, the plan is to create a new Drupal default team. Um, one, one thing that I forgot to mention was that uh, uh, during preparing the presentation for DrupalCon New Orleans, we, uh, me and Scott went to look out first time for the other open source platforms. and. Uh, that was when we, uh, when I at least realized that there is some huge demand for having a better design because of but while we were evol evaluating how modern their teaming capabilities were, we found out that how their system was designed was somehow affecting how we were thinking how modern the system was. Like it was not rational way of thinking about their system at all, but it was easy to realize after a while. And then, of course, some re-evaluation re had to be done. Also, these systems were only open source competitors. If, if you go look at the uh, more uh, systems, systems that are funded, who are, who are having corporate corporations behind them, they usually have even well-built designs, and they are able to demonstrate whole bunch of different kind of use cases using their systems. Like uh, Angie was giving presentation this morning and she was showing something built on Wix and other systems. And it was like, they, they could have like tens of different uh, showcases built using their systems, which is pretty interesting. It's pretty convincing that their system is good for building something that is beautiful. But let, let's proceed for what is happening with this uh, this this topic in in Drupal, trying to create a new new design. So I'm going to quickly go through the uh, the the proposed roadmap initiative uh, roadmap for the initiative, and then after that we can discuss some of the topics that uh, the people who has been working on the initiative think are blocking this this initiative the most. Uh, so the first step that we have is choosing a designer since none of the uh, the people working on this initiative are really willing to do the design for this team. Uh, at this point, we would also create some some kind of uh, initial design, very, very rough, like just very minimum, with the minim uh, minimum uh, provided uh, resources that, that we could, just some kind of an idea 
that what could it be? And then we could validate that. The, the second phase, the phase B, would be to create the initial design uh, with the form team. Uh, at this point, we would create uh, we would we would uh, create the design principles and values and some of the page concepts, and we would provide that for the public fee feedback for a couple of weeks, allowing the com community provide uh, feedback. And this is a crucial part of the uh, the proposed roadmap that we would be working uh, privately, and we would be providing uh, something that we will, we will propose for the community and they can provide feedback. And as part, uh, as part of the, um, the proposal is that the, the initiative team can either do something with the feedback or they, they, they don't have to do anything with the feedback if they decide to do so. Uh, so not all the feedback has to be addressed necessarily. Uh, that's ob obviously a risk always for the team to proceed if there is like open concerns on something. But if the if the team uh, thinks that something is not a valid concern at that stage, they could totally proceed without uh, without replying to some of the concerns. Uh, after that, uh, we would start creating a prototype uh, out of the uh, the detail. Uh, as part of creating the detailed de design. Um, that would mean creating a style guide, uh, uh, deciding on the typography, the colors, uh, and different kind of graphic elements. And then we, would, then we would also get feedback on that for maybe two or four weeks. Uh, after creating all of these different, uh, uh, different uh, resources and being able to validate them with the community, uh, we would start to build the team. And this is the part where technical st things would start to happen. Before that, everything is pretty much non-technical. Uh, so at this point, we would create integration for the design into a Drupal team. Uh, this would be the, the part where we create kind of like a minimum viable product, something that we can uh, introduce as an experimental team. I don't know if that's even a thing, but maybe we could make it a thing. Um, uh, where we would include uh, form stylings, front page styling, uh, probably note page, user and taxonomy uh, pages. And that would be all at, this, at that point. Uh, after making all of these things happen, these are the most common use cases. We could create support for the uh, less common use cases such as form module and uh, other, others. And the last phase of the initiative would be uh, bringing the uh, team into stable, not into stable team, but making it stable instead. And uh, at this stage, we would we might have to make some changes for the installation profile because of uh, some of the things related for the content has to be done in the installation profile instead of uh, on the team. Uh, gladly, there is another initiative hap happening same time about default content. So. Uh, at this point, we would review what, what things do we have to do as part of this and what things would have to be done as part of the other initiative. Maybe there are some other things that we want to do as part of this thing, providing some views or something like that. It doesn't necessarily have to be content as, at this, st this stage. And at this point, we would also uh, mature that uh, team into a stable front-end team that could be chosen as Drupal's default team. That's the current plan. but obviously plans might change. So I think we could discuss what's, what's happening. So the first serious topic that I have, uh, this, is, this is what I uh, actually realized today, was that is one design gonna be enough for us? Because if um, probably um, after, after we have made this design happen, also, our fellow competitors has made some kind of moves. And looking at the, the proprietary CMSs at this moment, because all of them seem to be do, uh, going to this direction, that they are demonstrating their, uh, their systems using multiple different designs, I was expecting that other open source systems would go into that direction while we are trying to, to, to create our design. So would it be enough at that point to have only one design, or should we have multiple? And now I'm expecting someone to come say, please make just one design first and then make another. Yeah, maybe 
that's a valid point also. But as I showed earlier, that what WordPress has, it doesn't always have to be very complicated. It can be starting from very simple things. We can demonstrate using very simple design principles. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's technically something complicated. So any thoughts about this, this topic? Uh, do, is one design enough or can you use the mic? Uh, and if you could also introduce yourself uh, first. I'm Christina Chimilas. I'm a designer and front-end developer. And I think that sometimes if, is that open? It's open? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sometimes if you give so too many options, it's not the good choice because just remember color. Uh, you have a lot of opportunities to create great themes, but you actually give someone that doesn't maybe doesn't have uh, enough design skills to create it. So no, I don't know. Maybe it's too much options. It's not of course, if there is enough hands for, for do it, maybe yes, but. Yeah, that's, uh, I think that is a very valid point that uh, making making more things might make it less attractive than making just the one thing. Like, like color module is a good example of something that probably easily makes things less attractive because it makes it multiple. I don't know if it's because of that or because of color module. <laughs> and actually, I just want to comment one more thing. Uh, we discussed with a uh, bunch of people earlier, will we be willing to decrease the, the level of expectation that we've set to Bartik, uh, that we will set for this new team? And there was at least the people that I talked at that point, I, uh, it was Jess, Angie, uh, Boyan, or we agreed that we would be willing to set uh, the barrier lower. Like we wouldn't set all these expectations for this new team. That it has to work with color module. It has to be something that people can build their team on, and all of these things. Yeah, go ahead. <coughs> yeah, uh, Andy, my um, uh, pixel mod on Drupal the Road. Um, so I think it would be good to have at least a couple of options. I don't want to go crazy or anything, uh, but I, I w if, if I read that sentence, I think there will be different uh, default content versions to you know visualize different things. Otherwise, it will be just bloated and you w will not recognize the purpose that was intended with the content. And th I think the same goes uh, for the design. So that you see that Drupal is really versatile. You need to do something that is a little bit different. And maybe it also takes a little bit of the, the, the pressure of uh, the, the, the theme initially, because then one theme can uh, be good with <coughs> one type of content and the other one can be good at that point. And then maybe later on in the next step, it can be both themes or th all three themes or what, not what we are envisioning can be good with uh, both use cases and both contents then later on. but. First, it will be a good step that you show, because that's a s that's one of the the strong suits of soup of Drupal that you can build almost anything, and if you show that only with one theme and only one set of content, <laughs> then 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 yeah, so it's then a better theme, but you know that's this also yeah. Just to summarize, it's kind of like I guess what you were saying is. Is, it a, is this a problem or is this a solution for a problem to have multiple designs? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Go ahead. So I'm Gabor Hoichi and I have like 10 different things and I, it's hard to tell what kind of other questions you're gonna have. So like it's hard to like position the feedback uh, correctly, but I think you are already standing up to do a brand new thing in and of itself. So if you can concentrate on doing it in one way for now, <coughs> Is a is a smaller battle to fight than trying to fight the much bigger battle initially. So I think even figuring out the process and how you do this for one thing uh, for one is is good, and then we can move on. And for now, we can assume that this is not going to be perfect. So the other thing for 
for the lowering the barrier is what we're pressed as well is that they psychologically um, tell you that they're going to expire their themes. So they name their theme after the year and the next year it's outdated because it's the name, the previous year's name. So they come up with another one for that year and another one for the next year. So they have this cycle of redoing it every year. And then they have, and then they and they don't have this expectation that it needs to work five years ahead, and it needs to support every magic technology on earth, and it needs to support every use case, and they can work on one one demonstration use case that it fits. Then the next year it's replaced anyway. So if you don't like it, you need to live with that for like five months after it, after uh, the whatever release comes out with that. But then it's going to be replaced anyway. Yeah. So I think if we can, so I think the process you've outlined may or may not take a long time. And the shorter time we can figure out to go through this process, the the shorter we can produce something new. And if it's not good, then we'll get that feedback anyway because we put it out there and we'll see and then we can do something new again. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> St still my point, Gabor. Um, oh, my name's David uh, Eatings. Um, uh, Eatings is my handle, not my last name. Sorry. <laughs> David Huang, sorry. Um, uh, like Gabor said, the, the timeliness of it, I think, is the important part. The, if we can show to the community that there are more coming along the way and we can deliver this first one quickly, and then there's going to be iterations or a completely new version if this first one doesn't do well, um, I think that's going to be more meaningful than capturing something really great at the first. Like We, we should, as a community, accept that the first one might even suck. But we'll get it out quickly and we'll, we'll go through this process. And... <laughs> oh, well, I, I, no, I st I'm stealing Yoro's point. Okay, great. <laughs> we'll just steal each other's points. Um, if we can do this quickly and demonstrate that the process works and ship something, even if it's not good, uh, it'll move the, the, the momentum so much further than, you know, that all the, 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 the crazy bike shedding that we could have for trying to do the mother of all themes. Yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting point because of, uh, I guess, many of us would like to uh, do it just like you're saying. But for me, it sounds like it's something that is easier done than it's easier said than done in the in the real life because we, we you, you see on the issue queue how things tend to go quite often. So I, I think one reason people bike shed a lot in the issue queue is they're worried that they're going to have to live with it forever, right? Yeah. Bartek hasn't fundamentally changed for six years, yeah. and everybody thinks, oh shit, I got to live with this for another six years. I better get my two cents in now, and if I don't get it, I'll die screaming, right? Yeah. Um, but if they know it's going to be just one of many up to come, yeah, that relieves that pressure. Yeah, that that makes sense now even more. Hi, hi I'm Chris from uh, Fliegen. So uh, my idea is uh, since we talk about we should have a design guide, so uh, with one design guide, but maybe we can have different like a uh, layout or different design following the same design guide, but different uh, layout can be uh, can for different purpose so we can demonstrate this uh, layout or design is uh, suitable for blogger and the other layout maybe for enterprise so we can have one design but have different uh, different layout so if possible they are not totally different design but mm, like different uh, for example the An Android they have uh, they have changed their design guide uh, very often, but they always use the same design uh, design guide for the, the entire product line. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That uh, so that's a little bit like the uh, what uh, Concrete Five is doing. A little bit similar kind of mindset that they are using the same design to provide different experience on diff all all these different pages. Uh, my name is Roy. Um, following up on that, the main point was like we should do one thing and then see how it works and then s do it the right way for uh, 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 next uh, themes or next ideas. I still think it would be good to have multiple designs or use cases so that we can show the range that we're aiming to fill, to cater for, and then uh, we can be very explicit, and now we're starting with this case. Say, 
the farmer's market as it's used in the user guide, for example, or with sample content and so on. But if we, so, because if we don't uh, make a specific choice in the, the use case we're catering for, we'll get the, the WordPress version, right? Yes. Which is a blank slate, a good looking blank slate with no character, no specifics. Well, bland, oh, blank is a character. Isn't it? So if we uh, at least outline possible design directions or use cases, portfolio, shop, whatever, uh, small NGO, etc., and say, and we're focusing on this one first, then uh, we, uh, we have been clear about making that decision and trade-off. We are clear about, and we have others, uh, we can work on that, but that's not this one really. Yeah, yeah, that was a very good point. Uh, any any other comments about this point? Uh, anyone want to make? Or I guess we can move to the next one, which al already was discussed by a few of us, which is like how often should the design be updated and what should trigger that to happen? Uh, and so, so there was a little bit of a conversation that part of the problem is that we didn't have a new design when we launched Drupal 8. But I'm not sure if that is the actual problem or if the actual problem is that the design is just outdated. So it would be good to discuss uh, how often often should these designs be updated and what should trigger that to happen. Any any points for this one? Gobber brought up yearly, but as Roy also mentioned, we should have several designs. I think we should just accept three or four designs, say, okay, this one's 2014, or I guess 2014 would make it, we'd have it done by now. <laughs> <laughs> this one's 2017, this one is 2018, and this one's slated for 2019, unless more people come and join. I mean, that'd be a great problem to have, to have multiple teams compete uh, to finish theirs first. I mean, uh, that, that, would, uh, that would be amazing if we could have that, but lack of that, we should just say, oh yeah, th these are all coming at three different times and you can look forward to seeing these at various states of completion in the coming year. So yeah, I don't, I don't think we should have a one design to work with. I should just take them all and, and, and slate them. So I know this sounds like Donald Trump, but I've <laughs> some people say, a lot of now some people say i've heard people say that um the <laughs> that maybe we maybe it's too early to do this and we should do this for drupal 9 instead oh. and drupal 9 may be around the corner which i don't agree with anyway uh so then maybe we by the time we finish this whole process drupal 9 will be here and then we'll then we'll have something new in Drupal 8, and then like a half year later, we're gonna have Drupal 9, and we'll need to something new to have again in Drupal 9. Uh, I don't think that's, I think that, that, so I heard that said from a few people, but I don't think Drupal 9 is that close. I don't think it's a problem if we replace it in six months, like why not? Um, I don't necessarily think that Drupal 9 needs a new one right away. Depends on how Drupal 9 folds out. Uh, and I don't think we should wait until Drupal 9 with this. I think we should have done this earlier. So, like, we we should have already done this. So, like, it's better to do it sooner than later. Um, I'm not sure if there is, like, a concrete trigger point that it needs to be changed. Yeah, so honestly. just like someone said, WordPress has one year. That's a very, very concrete trigger for a new design. So that helps. So if you set a deadline, that helps. Yes, that helps set set things in motion because then it sets up the li the expectations as well as as well as what's going to happen. But that that but they can do this because they have a vast source of people doing designs, and we could say like one year we're going to replace it. But then there's if there's nobody working on it, then we're like, mm, what's what happens now? So if we are in that in that lucky position that there's multiple people lined up to do something, then the that sounds good. Yeah, and there has been quite a few people working on the front end issues, but 
the effort has went to maintaining what we already have instead of building something new because building something new has been very difficult it's a I'm, huge process i'm not contesting that there's not a lot of hordes of people <laughs> who are technically capable of doing this i'm contesting that there's people just afraid of the core process and yeah yeah or, or just don't have the time to to endure yeah, that makes Which sense. Which makes total sense because yeah. it's not easy. And especially uh, with something like team, the core process is horrible because like you need to you need to involve in this process the scariest people in the community. Like you need to have uh, like the the total like uh, everyone from the up uh, till the do t down involved in this process. So it's like as complicated as something could get. Yeah. So if we set a so to your back to your point, if we set a schedule ahead of time then that makes it explicit that there's not like a request from from you, the the person, the random community person, that we should do something new, <laughs> but it's kind of an expectation that we're going to do something new. So if we agree on that ahead of time, that makes it easier to to start off these new things. Yeah. Um, just a random-ish idea about what could be a trigger. What if... Media Initiative has a well-rounded, full, complete-ish solution in 8.4 or 8.5. Couldn't that be a trigger to update the portfolio uh, theme design to showcase? Well, it's not an admin theme, so I don't know. <laughs> but to showcase those new specific capabilities. So that might be something that uh, could help decide which one to evolve next because new features. Yeah. I think new feature is totally a valid trigger for something like this because that's usually what you want to promote. Yeah. Uh, and a new design is totally a good way to, to promote something like that. Yeah. Um, then the second sentence, do we then need to repeat this entire process for Drupal 9? It sounds like you're already like, oh. <laughs> um, and that's probably a, a more like a, a culture shift. Um, we're continuously re-architecting Drupal 8 tools, right? We're adding features, we're uh, deprecating things uh, and reworking things. And I think the same idea, same mentality should be brought to design. Um, we're constantly redesigning. The whole world is constantly redesigning. Um, and that how do how to do that is another thing like lowering the barriers and having multiple options etc but uh, i think if we can somehow get that point home by <laughs> iterating on that idea of we're constantly redesigning um, that would help in getting more done faster yeah makes sense any more comments for this one I guess not, we can proceed to the next one, which is a big issue, <laughs> at least. So it's when we want to make these designs happen, how are we going to get designers involved in Drupal? Because Drupal is not a very designer-centric community. How could we attract designers to do something for us? So one of the ideas was that um, companies might be interested in sponsoring their designers to do something. But probably that's that's not the good way in terms if we want to make it sustainable for a long time that we trust on one company or two companies to do it. Instead, we want to have healthy com community ar around the design in Drupal. Like I think we have a healthy community around usability right now in Drupal. Like probably we could use some more hands. Always, uh, like I guess any 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 of us could could uh, agree with that. Uh, yeah, like there is a process around it. There is some people that are working on it, and yeah. So, does anyone have any ideas how could we get some designers involved? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I can tell. Uh, one extra comment that our community is very scary for many designers. Like we scare many of the designers out once they come inside our community. So that might be one of my personal opinions <laughs> why designers don't come. But that doesn't answer the question why 
or how are we going to get them inside our community? Uh, one, have a very clear briefing. Two, with a very specific, limited scope. Because uh, uh, we go on and on and on, right? And that's the yeah. scary bit, right? We don't stop. Uh, we need to uh, use 300 comments to uh, redesign a single page yeah. if we uh, <laughs> if we want to, and we that's and it's not done, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, at the very least, uh, one of the requirements would be to box in uh, uh, the assignment or the briefing, uh, what we ask people to give, because that's what we're doing, right? Um, and one of the other ways to do that is to think to be very clear in that that person uh, creates an initial design and then is not be very clear. You're not. We're not asking you to do all the implementation details. We ask you to transition to kind of like an art director role where we maybe can have biweekly calls. <laughs> And uh, get your question, get questions uh, answered. Well, oh, I would do it like this. Uh, what should the RSS feed icon look like? Well, <laughs> figure it out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, limit limit the scope of what you're asking people to do. Um, and then the team, T E A M, uh, the core team around this team, <laughs> uh, uh, should be the protective layer, I guess. So. That should be the main interface this person is working on. And we should probably shield him or her uh, from the larger community, at least uh, in some sense. Yeah, thank you. I was just going to add that I think a good way to encourage and show designers that we take them seriously and we want them to be around is to give them things like authority in when it comes to creative decisions and rather submit all their decisions for everybody's public approval we're going to just cut it off and suck it up and build what they design. And if it's not good, then we'll take care of it the next round, right? I'm getting real, uh, I'm going to pick buy a lottery ticket tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really good at predicting these, this next person's comments. If we give people authority and show them that we'll take them seriously from the get-go, there will be more people who want to come and contribute for themes B, C, and D after we get A out. And I saw what happened to Mark Bolton with Seven when we paid Mark Bolton a ton of money to make really authoritative decisions about Seven, and he still got second guessed throughout the issue queue. Like, oh, we, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he was also pretty forceful in replying to people too, which is good, but you know, th there, there was still a lot of second guessing going on. So for somebody who we're paying no money to, or you know, maybe nominal money, um, you know, it, the situation would be much worse, right? Um, Right, yeah. We, the, the least we could do is let them own the integrity of their design from beginning to end and treat that as the, the, the uh, you know, treat that as, uh, as authoritative. Yeah, I agree that we have the issue that every little Drupal developer thinks that there is their interior designer living inside them and they want to comment on all of the design related issues because of that. Yeah, the colors you're using totally off. So, um, <laughs> so so yeah. So, um, so I think, so I think generally, even generally involving people in the community are better with uh, small safe groups. So what we found with the usability team, for example, is once we set up a way for it, once we identified ourselves as hey, we are the usability team. And we set up a way for people to come in and and share and work with us. Then totally random people from from everywhere showed up, and they are working on from the smallest things to the biggest things. Uh, and they have this like safe space of feedback loop there that that we can review things and we can provide feedback. And I'm not saying that we re we solve all the problems that that a designer may face, but that's um, but that kind of it somehow shields shields them off from some of the problems and also provides the constant feedback loop that helps with moving forward. And the other thing that we we are tr we are trying to launch now is the ideas queue, which is supposed to codify this difference of everybody shouting at you and or not. So basically there's the Drupal.org slash project slash ideas. 
which is supposed to be the first step of proposing big things like a new theme. And then the first step is actually broken down to, I think, three areas to, to have a hypothesis of what you want to do, to have a prototype, and then to make a plan, how to do that. And so you have this sealed off area in the ideas queue to figure out a high level plan and a high level prototype and you don't get the bitching of the technology and everything that would happen in the issue queue otherwise uh, until people figure out the ideas queue. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, but, but once they figure out, we can say that's not the queue for talking about that. And there, and there you can agree on high level goals. And the idea is that the decisions there are, authori are authoritative. So when we move from there to the core queue, then you say, we already decided this. And look at that issue. We discussed that it's done. We said it to done, and now we moved it to implementation. So the idea is to support these kind of workflows. We've never done this before, so I don't know how it's going to work. Uh, but yeah, that's the idea. Yep. Sounds good. Um. Any other comments? Any ideas how we can get more designers involved? No. Oh. Well, Roy has some ideas. Mm, a suggestion? Yeah. Um, we have to broadcast that the job is there. Uh, this is we're now advertising the project here in this room. This is not our audience for this yeah. question. So we need to find places uh, where we can advertise this opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, we had four people. Yeah? yeah. That's good. I have to remember yeah, I, I, each, I, I, of I, I, each of you. Did you take a photograph? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a serious commitment. <laughs> uh, it was a signature on a contract. I guess a summary of what, what Gabor said is that we need to provide a safe space and provide a peer group, basically, so that the designer yeah. knows that she's talking with designers. Yeah. Okay, I, I guess, do you have something to add for this one? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Uh, so I'm Keith and um, it's picking up on the mention of Mark Bolton. Uh, one of the things that Mark Bolton talks about is uh, designers and developers needing to work together. And I wonder if it's, I have no idea how this works, but how do we, how do we tackle that issue? You know, we need to get designers actually understanding the world of the developers in Drupal core and vice versa is really important. Yeah, I don't have any ideas. How are we going to do that? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a difficult problem, at least for me. Maybe another thing to attract some designers will be giving them some um, uh, different setting. Exposure. Yeah, some exposure to them. I don't know. Maybe it's because there are not so many designers and they are not actually involved in the in the core or any other issues. So maybe just giving something like I don't know. Maybe not exposure, but I don't know what else to get them there. Yeah, at least appreciation in terms of maintainership and all of these uh, different things that we can, that we already have in place and we can give them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see why this couldn't be funded through a Drupal shop as core contribution. It, it's as meaningful as writing any code. Uh, the only volunteer designer I know who's worked for Drupal voluntarily for multiple years is the designer for Batcamp who is an absolute madman and does a new design for Batcamp every year and has for the last seven years. Um, so if you've been to Batcamp or seen like a Batcamp hoodie, it, it looks completely different every year because Darius is an absolute madman. Um, but it's also that we complete give complete design deference to him. It's like, Darius, you design it, we'll just build it, right? Just design it, right? Doesn't matter how hard, doesn't matter how crazy. We'll, we'll, we give him the authority and say so to 
to run with it and, and he's in the end he owns the creative and we and we acknowledge that and he gets to see his ideas brought to life again and again and again by others so there is a give and take there that we can i don't want to say exploit that we can use to our a mutual advantage if we're willing to to, to y have that kind of relationship versus give us deliverables and we'll take care of the rest which is probably not what you want you you, you want somebody who can be part of that process from the end to end and, and own th that that creative all the way through yeah that that's a good su suggestion yeah i think uh if there's somebody um coming in as a designer and one wanting to make a design for a, for a drupal theme i think it would be good that he uh, he she or he would have a buddy to pair up with so somebody that is more from a front-end developer perspective or developer perspective or you know um and can uh you know, give advice if, if this will work or, you know, protect a little bit or take care of, uh, you know, all the issues that might uh, pop up or, you know, bike shedding and what not what can happen there. Uh, so, um, like yeah, <laughs> somebody like Lowry or, yeah, but that, <laughs> because it's, I think it's, uh, it's a hard thing to, you know, Take care of the, the the design and 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 own the design and 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 uh, make those decisions and uh, and so if you have some companion that helps you uh, get this push through or f fight for that design, that that would be great. And there will be already somebody that can do implementation and stuff, and it would make it happen. Yeah, that's a very good suggestion. I think that is something that is very crucial in order to make this sustainable in long term. Like. We want if, if we get designers involved in this pro in pro in this process, we want them to tell other designers that it was awesome to work with these people instead of them telling that it was horrible to work with the Drupal community. I hate them. Like we don't want that kind of exposure mm -hmm. at all. So I think it's necessary that we are able to provide uh, like uh, help for these people. And I I don't mean in a sense I trust the designers. They can do the design, but they might need some help with the community management and like things that they haven't had to figure out in their previous uh, assignments that they've worked with. Yeah, we're a horrible client if, if, <laughs> if we're not managed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Keith, to your point about uh, designers and developers collaborating, uh, it's a fair question and I think you're maybe now really seeing us stressing the point of how to separate those concerns at the f at first um because that's the scary part i mean it's uh, historically when we start discussing design we're quickly uh, the discussion is quickly taken over or maybe even stampeded by technical details um and we want to we want we know there's technical details and we have to figure those out uh, but we want to establish the goal, the visual goal in this um, uh, part, in this case, first. And uh, I think in the ideas queue that we're going to try out, there's these three stages where there's an idea. Hey, let's do a new theme. There's a prototype. It could look like this. And then there's the plan. And the plan needs to involve all uh, expertises that this initiative hits so uh, it will have uh, accessibility input. It will have a performance input if it does uh, weird JavaScripty things. Uh, it will have, uh, etc. Um, implementation feedback before we can even sign off on a plan in a way that we can say, "Hey, here's a spec. Let's build this." So we're postponing that, and we're trying to create that initial bubble where we uh, uh, won't get bogged down in those details. Um, hi, my name is Joel Patet, and I'm the theme, one of the theme system co-maintainers. Team API. Oh, they changed it? Yeah. <laughs> Without asking us. Oh, okay, whatever. Um, 
Uh, anyways, I don't care. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to like offer my support um, uh, from the implementation side of things. Um, I, 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 in former life, I, I went to design school, um, so I can help there, but I'm not like as an expert in doing it day to day like uh, the actual designers. Um, so when it comes to the point where you're actually trying to implement it, I can kind of smooth those edges a little bit, and I, that, I would love to offer my support for that. And I'm sure some theme system maintainers or whatever they're called now. Would probably do the same thing, but yeah, I'm just want to offer my support. And I, I work, I worked with Christina on a recent issue. It was, it's not done yet, but it's it seems to be going along pretty smooth. And uh, back and forth uh, on like some design things that might not have worked or too hard to implement or something like that. And concessions were made on both sides to try to get it done. And so yeah. So let's proceed to the next up next. Next question, which is, are we ready to get a designer involved? This we kind of discussed, like our community is not probably fully ready for having a designer, uh, but uh, what is our spec and what are, what, is, what are our constraints when we get a designer involved in this process? Uh, so this is a difficult question also. Is there something that we should change on the community side? Uh, uh, is there something that we can we can do to ease this process? Um, today in uh, Mojang's blog about design, someone mentioned a feature is true. They could say that it, uh, that design is not democracy. Who said that? Yeah. You. Okay, I say that. I don't quote it. I say that. <laughs> yes, because um, the first time I mentioned that uh, with some friends, they say, hey, I want to give my opinion about that. And it was like, wait, you are not a designer. And if we want everybody, if everybody wants to say something about the design, we will end up with a, a pager in a Drupal issue. So, and that's possible. So first step should be that people sh should understand that design is not <coughs> uh, being, it's not that all the other stuff in, in Drupal the product. So how could we avoid this issue? So one of them was uh, to work in the private, uh, private issue queues, private something. Is there anything else that we can do? Because there is still going to be at some form of the the bike shed. So on on the on the on the ish, issue summary proposal, there is section which is avoiding bike shed section, where we have written down that we try to make as many decisions privately as possible and uh, suggest them uh, as a solution instead of asking for feedback or asking them if this is good. Uh, so that's what we have written down from from this so far. Is there anything else that we could add to this? Because it's a major concern on on this issue. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Tobi. Um, I teach design and front end and do, yeah, front designing and implementing stuff. Um, I think you need, we need a clear design brief. What this theme should uh, work for. So I think we don't get away with one theme. You can design a portfolio site and use it for a blog post. It won't work. So when you have this design goal, you can discuss does this design support this design goal or not. And so we create clear goals and constraints what should be designed. Yeah, I almost wanted to say the same thing. <laughs> is that once you have a spec, then you can check the feedback against the spec. It's like, if you're arguing with the spec, sure. Like, I like, do you think that we forget about something? Like, if you forget about accessibility, sure, argue with us. But if, if like, the that icon should be five pixels right, no, that's not. So if there's, like, a fundamental problem with the spec, that's a good argument, which may happen however many people discuss that. But if it's just like, if it's an opinion on how it's implemented or whatever, then it doesn't match into the realm of does the 
does this proposal match the spec or not? I think if that's something that we need to consciously and probably constantly fight in the discussions because it will come up anyway and it's a, it will take time for the community to adapt some of, to some of these new normals and new approaches that we didn't do before. But if we don't do it, then it will never change. So we'll need yeah. to fight the fight. Yeah. Yeah, but it, we already discussed about this topic quite a lot earlier on. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to uh, uh, move to the last question, which is uh, just a generic question. If there's any other thoughts that uh, that uh, you want to give about the process of the initiative or anything that we've, we've done so far. So this is the part where you can just give so, all so the comments. This might be totally on you, Larry, but we, we need a way to shut down diversions when people start bringing up their pet technologies. Um, we're very good at suggesting technological solutions before the problem has been fully defined and then cast discussion in terms of, well, should we use blah, blah, blah technique? when we don't even know what we're solving for to begin with. So um, I don't know if that means we're going to have to be really aggressive in the issue queue about this or, or, or you know, f spin off like sand traps for other people to argue about it for a while, you know, but the the 50 reply digression into bootstrap is, is going to destroy <laughs> the yeah. issue queue momentum. Uh, it's, it's a very complicated issue because it, uh, like uh, for me, it's also like all of these people who I appreciate but I couldn't really like agree with their comment, and like it's it's something that could be discussed at some point, but I just feel like it's in the wrong place at the wrong time, and so it's very difficult to find a reply for that without without si sounding rude and without like shutting them down from that conversation. So uh, probably when you ask, we should be more aggressive. I think. That's the only way we can some somewhat end that kind of uh, conversation from happening. Yeah. Uh, so I was just going to say there's been a lot of design going on with outside in and with some of the admin layer and wondering how conscious people should be about mapping that design experience and interaction experience to a new base theme. I haven't been in, involved in the outside in at all myself. So, I mean, there's, uh, as a new experience for Drupalers, they're going to have that design experience of what's being designed for those areas. And if that contrasts with that new base theme, then that's going to be kind of jarring. Um, we were discussing at one point, a few of us, uh, probably at different events, I can't remember, um, the problems with the admin um, UI showing up on front themes, because we're doing a lot of like uh, edit in line and uh, contextual links always breaks in Drupal 7 uh, when you do a new theme um, and some of those kind of things. Uh, we don't have a solution uh, for that, but it's going to become more and more prevalent as you see some of the inside out or outside in or whatever it's called. Um, so yeah, uh, there's no solution for it, but uh, suggestions are welcome. Um, how do you deal with, like we have two themes that we're running parallel and uh, some of the interface is going to be shared between the two. Yeah. So yeah, uh, currently that is, uh, now I uh, understood the question and we discussed this in Barcelona and a bunch of other events, I yeah, think. Yeah, Seattle yeah, also. So. Uh, there is some issues because it's a little bit of wild wild west like some style style sheet is currently coming from seven to style some of the things on the front end but then some of the things are coming from the modules and some of the things are coming from the front front end theme so we have styles basically coming from ev everywhere to team these uh admin components on the on the front end yeah and that's definitely an issue itself that needs to be solved uh it i i i, I don't yeah, it's a technical uh, issue that it, I was just about to say that it's an issue that is not uh, relevant in uh, uh, for for this new team to happen. It's not something that we need to solve in order to be able to create this team, but it should be solved itself in another context for sure. And it's an uh, issue that I'm interested of myself also. Go ahead. 
I don't want to talk for you, but I think you meant. I think you meant do we, the visual taking it visually into account, not technically. Oh. But oh. Like, how, like the new theme should work with the toolbar and the settings tray and the contextual links and visually. Oh. And whatever we do visually, we need to take into account what's happening visually with all of these other experiences on the page that may also change in the meantime, by the way. Oh, so it was about how the admin elements looks visually or how the Altogether, team looks visually. Yeah. How they play together. How they, they play, play together. together. The yeah. place block feature, the yeah. settings tray, the toolbar. the. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely one of the things that needs to be taken care of. And it's definitely probably becoming more complicated all the time because of more features is being added. Okay. So uh, unfortunately, I have another thing that I, I have no solution for, and not even can think of one. But um, um, it, it somehow it should we should incorporate how we really use Drupal because uh, you know we are not we are not WordPress. So it it will it w if we stop at making a pretty thing that works with core, um, that's cool. And I would appreciate that because it's it just shows off that we we, we have a system that that uh, is modern and works well and and looks good and it's not just you know. um, but we we tend to use Drupal really totally different and in so many ways so we need to somehow and this maybe also goes back to the 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 default content thing um, that we have to figure out a way that we don't stop at having a theme that that works well with something that is a blog or a corporate website or something like that it's hard it's i think it's a hard thing it's there it's not easy to see for me a, a solution because the, the it's so different how we use that but somehow it should show off that the drupal is is not only a cms but a framework and that people use it in in millions of ways yeah and also allows them to build beautiful design on there. Yeah. Because otherwise we have a real beautiful thing that has, you know, a couple of columns in the footer and, 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 and things like that. And yeah. Somehow we need to work on how to go beyond that and show some of the strength that you can have with Drupal as a thing that you can build an application with. But that hits almost on like, uh, should it be a uh, a base theme then or something? Because wouldn't I think one of the directions we explored in this discussion is that we showed that wide range of possibilities by eventually releasing multiple themes. Because if we're going to require one theme to carry that whole burden, then where where then we are uh, where we are. That's uh, so. That's not what I meant. Okay. So I don't want to have the one one ring that rules them all and and stuff. No, but it would be you know there is a lot of concept involved and a lot of thinking and the designer will run in one direction and some other designer will run into another direction. But uh, um, in the concept phase, we also will uh, talk about those directions and. Uh, there should be some uh, thought put in the, the the fact that it's not only um, a s you know static content driven website. So thing. is it more like uh, it shouldn't only be like aesthetics, but also let's really showcase our content modeling expertise by having sample content with uh, with a few nice content types. Hey, look, if we b if you build a view. Mm. I think the problem is twofold, uh, the, the, uh, or the, 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 the solution should be uh, uh, twofold. Um, so um, the static point, yeah, we th th that will be solved by the designer because uh, she will have uh, an idea how, how this will look great. Um, but the, the we, we should have something that um, is also usable. That's the one point, you know, because uh, uh, if you, if you have all those 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 applications you can build or those usable different projects usable for 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 somebody for that no for somebody that's building a project together with a themer and a designer or something that you know because it's not only showing that it can work but it it will get used 
you know, there have been times that somebody used Bartik for whatever reason. And, uh, um, so it will get used and copied and modified and, and, and stuff. So it should kind of work for more than one home page or for one s the, the front page. This is an interesting constraint that we make, uh, we have to take a position on because I would maybe argue for the counter idea where this theme works only, works very well for this specific use case. And uh, it's basically, in that sense, also like training wheels. Mm -hmm. And I mean, your first Drupal site, it's what you learn, right? And then you go build a new one with a new, with Zen or with this. And then they are your patterns. Mm -hmm. So yeah, good point. And I think it's one important thing, uh, part of the, the constraint or the, yes. the vision for what this thing should do. Yeah, and I, I agree that uh, you need to be able to modify, you need to be able to use the features that Drupal provides, but you don't have to be able to build a fully fledged uh, site on top of that. That's like what I would, how, how I would vision. Yes. Go ahead. So when is this released? <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully 8.2. Long, longer question is, the, so the plan, Plans supposed to come with some estimated timelines. Do you have estimated timelines? So uh, the, the the realistic plan is to uh, have something released for the eight point three. That's realistic. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> or not not realistic. It's the optimistic plan. Okay. That's yeah. <laughs> okay. That one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, but that's not the point where we have something as a as a default theme for sure. Cool. But something. Yay. Yeah. Well, like assuming that that we have enough people help. So as people sitting here don't assume that this what Laurie said means that somebody will do this for eight point three because this involves getting people on board and making it happen. So if you yeah. can help, so when we state dates, it doesn't mean that that they will be just magically done by that time. Uh, I guess it's in February. Uh, s February, March? Oh, no, uh, no April. Is February and then the release is in April. Yeah. So, uh, have you coordinated that plan with the default content uh, team? We are working on that. Okay. So, my concerns here is that I have a dream and I dream with several profiles in core. So, what I'm concerned is what uh, people who is using the standard profile, what are they using it for? And how we can provide a theme that actually fits with that content and provide, I mean, I, I don't think we can fit all the use cases. So are we defining what the standard profile should be used on? So we can then better provide better profiles or different profiles for different use cases with different themes for them. So we can, that's, we can create a new installation profile with uh, all of these new features, and people can keep using the standard uh, standard uh, installation profile for the use case it was used for before. And then we have this new installation profile called new users or demonstration or whatever, uh, and then they will use that. And it will be uh, specifically designed for the one use case. Yeah, go ahead. Just another thought about process. Uh, uh, Gabor and I, we uh, basically rebooted uh, UX meetings and uh, it, it works to have predictable availability of the experts um, once or twice a week or once every two weeks. But if you establish some kind of rhythm, um, then people will show up and you didn't ask it, but you were available and you broadcast that availability. Yeah. Um, and you might find out that you're that we're more ready <laughs> to go ahead than, than, than we may be thinking. Um, 